During the last two, two and a half years, when we all been inside our homes, the most carbon or constant partner that we had has always been the Wi-Fi. That it's not just about consumption of data, the distribution of data consumption, that pattern. But the big difference is in the rural area, because that's the, where the mass population is. They have started to use video. And the main population who are using this video is unliteracy people. The Wi-Fi framework has been fast-tracked at least, you know, in the last two years, we have actually covered a journey of four years. There, there is no single band Wi-Fi now avail available. People are now going for a dual band only from AC to AX. Here again, welcome you all. And um, my fellow panelists need not to have any introduction because they are the industry veterans and most of the people are known to you. And let me here by start with introducing as in uh, protocol. So let me introduce the first one, you know, it's going to be a little, I will not keep the suspense, with more than 22 years of international experience from management role to the leadership roles. Once used to work for the Nokia and Ball Big Names, and now the CEO of a company called Genexus. Now, the, the man behind the, the successful building of a brand name called Genexus, which is, which is the FTTH known brand. I welcome Mr. Paritosh Prajapati. He's a seed national, basically from India, and had a great knowledge of uh, insights of a Wi-Fi domain in terms of the FTTH cross sales. And uh, a big applaud for him. Thank you. And, and the, my second fellow panelist is, um, he's an executive consulting director for Samsung India, Bangalore and a professor in IASC and erstwhile uh, IITs as well. And um, he has a very established career, career, used to be in Bell, Nautil, and ST Ericsson and Samsung, where he has been corporate vice president during his stint in 2005 and 11. He has served a visiting professorship in IIT Roorkee and IIT Delhi, you know, which used to be the dream of all the engineers. He holds a B.Tech from IIT Kharagpur, M.E. from IASC Bangalore, and Ph.D. from McGill University. And the panelist is none other than Mr. Aloknar Day. Thank you. An excellent uh, veteran from the technical standpoint. Then I would like to introduce uh, Bharat sir. Maybe you know the introduction is not going to be that big because you know everybody knows you. So Bharat sir is a very known and veteran name in when it comes to an, a telecom circle for India is an ITU APT Foundation President and a Vice Chairman of the World Wireless Research Forum WWRF for the Asia Pacific region. Earlier, he was also a President of TEMA and very closely connected to all these vendors for regulating and the, the hardware story of it. He is also a Vice President of ATI's Association of Telecom Industries for Singapore. Mr. Bhatia also chairs the ITU working group for 5G industrial applications. So expect a lot of hearing from him in terms of uh, emotional uh, technologies, uh, futuristic uh, Wi-Fi spectrum bands and everything. And uh, this is uh, from the panelist. And I expect people in the audience to be more interactive because this is your chance to make most of it. And let me, let me start it. So, before I start, I'm going to ask you a very generic question where we have a similar answers. How was the last two years went with you? So before I ask the, the fellow members, it's going to be very similar for all of us. We are working work from home. We have, you know, realized the importance of connectivity in terms of Wi-Fi and uh, broadband. The people here, you know, I was just felt very uncomfortable when my Wi-Fi was not working and my 4G was not supporting me in this forum. So this is the kind of habitual behavior which we are going through. So let me start with a very generic answer and a generic question to my fellow members that uh, how was the pandemic affected consumption across the nation? My question first to, uh, you know, I'm going to have all the views from all the panelists. Let me start with Bharatji. 
Bharat ji, how would the pandemic affect data consumption across nation? Your views on that? Good afternoon to all of you, and thank you uh, for introducing me. I think everybody who is here in this hall knows the importance of Wi-Fi. It, it's kind of a, become a very inclusive part of our lives. During the last two, two and a half years, when we all been inside our homes, the most carbon uh, or constant partner that we had has always been the Wi-Fi. Whether it is students studying from home, whether it is uh, office goers like us, or whether it is uh, business people delivering goods, everything has entirely depended on the availability of Wi-Fi uh, during this year. And I'm not sure if I can uh, uh, connect my lap laptop, but uh, what we have noticed is that during this period, the, the Wi-Fi traffic has almost increased by 50 to 80 percent. And that in itself provides a reason that we need to spend, uh, when I say we, I'm thinking myself as more of a part of a regulatory framework of the country. <clears throat> we need to look at how do we meet the kind of requirements that this new data uh, explosion uh, which is uh, offloaded onto the Wi-Fi is going to uh, be, be met. We have actually seen the offloading to Wi-Fi has increased more and more during these three years, but going forward, even Without the pandemic also, uh, our view is that uh, Wi-Fi is going to play a big role uh, in our lives. New technologies for Wi-Fi are being evolved, and uh, particularly the two technologies that are uh, being talked about, uh, Wi-Fi 6E uh, in the 6 gigahertz band and uh, Y gig in the uh, V band. Those are the kind of new innovations uh, that are going to uh, meet this uh, challenge that the pandemic has uh, created for us. So maybe I, I will come back later on this question a little bit more. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. So I don't know about many people, but Wi-Fi, as its name comes, very similar similar to the Wi-Fi. And it, I think in the last two years, it resembles more like a Wi-Fi, a first Wi-Fi for you, because, you know, there's a lot of dependency on that to do a, a number of things. So I would like to have views from you, Mr. Alok. Thank you. Um, again, good afternoon, all. I think, uh, you know, we all know we've been working from home, so there is nothing new in that part. And Varadji just stated how the Wi-Fi uh, data rate grew 60 to 80% during this period. And your question has been, how has been the data consumptions? So in general, let me take a step back and see where all do we use data? So we stay at home and we work. So obviously there is this consumption. We travel and in the mobility in car and other places and we consume data while traveling itself. We go to the offices and the enterprise has this facility of the data consumptions and uh, your work. And then we also go to cafe and airport and other places that's where we consume data because we might be waiting for uh, times to be there and uh, your own work. So what has happened during this pandemic time, this office part has become absent and the mobility has also reduced. Therefore, it has concentrated quite a lot at home. And now that we are opening it up, the mobility is coming back. Enterprise might be lesser. Even offices are thinking of having small office throughout the country, in every cities, smaller places, and then you can work from anywhere, some days at least, so therefore cafe and other places would become important. So one thing to notice, the data growth, because we are moving from 
first gen to second gen, going up to 5G, and the throughput is high, latency is low, you can bring new applications, and just because of that, you have a data consumption. We have the multimedia, rich multimedia, I call fast modem and rich media, and because of the media, you know, it's not just speech and audio or image and AR and VR, this is a convergence seminar, and we understand how this multimedia is growing. So there is fundamental growth from those itself, but what I wanted to say in this round is that it's not just about consumption of data, the distribution of data consumption, that pattern itself is changing pre-pandemic to during pandemic to post pandemic. And I think we as a developer uh, of standards, of design and equipments, of deployment of policies need to be cognizant of these data pattern changes and whatever we devise next should meet to that. So there are new standards. We started Wi-Fi from Wi-Fi 802.11b, uh, 2.4 gigas, just 11 Mbps that time. And today, even Wi-Fi 5, which we talk about, it's like, you know, already 1,300 Mbps, at least theoretically. So that's kind of 100 times more than what was specified. I'm not even talking about Wi-Fi 6 that is coming, 6E, as Varadji said, that's an extension, and going into 6 gigahertz, 7 design have started happening 2024, those standards will come. But uh, that pattern, uh, I just wanted to highlight in this round. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Alok. And would like to have um, Paritosh view on the, on the same. And you can consider India and uh, Sweden as well. Yes. Thank you, Chief Des. Uh, yes, my name is Paritosh and uh, I'm based in Sweden. So a little bit different angle on the data consumption. Uh, first of all, it's clear India is going through a digital evolution. Uh, people are getting connected. And we're talking about 100, 130 crore of people. So obviously the, the demand of data is there. But the difference is India per user is the higher consumption of data. So that's the big question mark. How can India be the highest consumption of data compared to anywhere in the world? Because you don't have the services, you don't have the applications yet, it's in the development phase. But the big difference is in the rural area because that's the, where the mass population is. They have started to use video. And the main population who are using this video is unliteracy people. They don't ha they know how to read. So they are getting access to videos, how to do things, YouTube, how to fix things. So they are becoming entrepreneurs. They are getting access to knowledge, first time ever. They don't have a knowledge of reading and they are the one who is booming the data. 15 gigabit per user, that's not a small data consumption. You don't find anywhere in the world. So th that makes mass explosion now of India is creating the data boom. And even if you go back even further, you see India has 30, approximately 30 crore homes, actually family homes. Out of these 30 crore homes, 24 crore has actually a TV set at home. Most of them are connected via cable. Now we see a trend in the market, OTT platforms. The rates are going down, the mass deployment is ongoing. That's also impacting. Seven to nine percent of these 24 crore homes are subscribing to OTT platforms. So this data boom is now just growing and it's not slowing down, we just started. If you look at, we are a fiber to the home company, we are deploying broadband equipment. And even in that segment, we are talking about 7% connected homes in India compared to anywhere in the world. In Europe, we are talking about 80% homes connected. Even China, a neighbor country, who has 60% home connected. So we are far away to go. And already at this stage, we have 15 gigabit per user. You can just imagine where we are heading. Thank you very much, Paritosh. So, you know, in all, if I can actually sum it up. So, anybody in this forum who has a less than 100 Mbps commission in their house? Anybody, you know, I can't see that is a reality now. So everybody is going because 100 G is, is, is so, so, so my question to you, do you have two kids? You're two kids and you're managing 50 Mbps connection. You're managing still in 50 Mbps connection at your house. And you have two kids. Kudos to you. <laughs> so, so, so the reality is because you know uh, I hail from a company which has a bigger interpretation of the network enhancements because 
Wi-Fi cannot be seen as in silos. So Wi-Fi experience is actually a function of a network transformation. In the last two years, I have seen the enhancement in the core, in the metro, in the aggregation network, distribution network has been quadrupled. So by the way, you see the, the Wi-Fi performance at your house is not, can be seen in an in a, in a isolation way. So there's a lot of hard work which has been given and kudos to all these um, the ODMs, OEMs, telco partners, MSOs, and the regulatory framework, which has actually helped in enhancing. The Wi-Fi framework has been fast-tracked at least, you know, in the last two years, we have actually covered a journey of four years. There, you, there is no single band Wi-Fi now avail, available. People are now going for a dual band only from AC to AX is the next step, which is going to be covered in the next one year, you know, when we have more compelling technologies in the place. So, uh, you know, for the next topic is that, uh, you know, Mr. Bharat, if you can actually show some, some real vital statistics for Elastic on India and Wi-Fi uh, for our audiences. When we look at world, we know that Wi-Fi is going around the world, but even in India, there are uh, the growth of Wi-Fi uh, 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 is growing in a big way, and I'm going to put some numbers to this. First, in 2021 alone, the value of Wi-Fi in India is estimated to be $131 billion. Now, look at that as, as a number of the Wi-Fi size in India at $130 billion in 2021, which is going to go in another four years in 2025 to $240 billion. So we are talking of a market size of $240 billion in India, which almost one could say it will double in next four years. That is the kind of opportunity size. 40% of Wi-Fi traffic, and I'm just talking of India, uh, in 2025, will be on 6 gigahertz. 6 gigahertz, I talked about Wi-Fi 6C, uh, is the new uh, spectrum band which all the regulators are looking at, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But that will have almost 40%, which means $100 billion worth of new innovation opportunity exists for India, which includes exports, which includes R&D, which includes software development, which includes uh, development of products which includes exports we are talking of a hundred billion totally new opportunity uh, for the Indian engineers and entrepreneurs uh, and the innovation experts and that number can, could easily be surpassed if we add to that maybe the the V band or Y gig uh, to that so you could even have a more increased market size uh, in the next coming four years. Only if we can uh, make our regulators look at this huge market opportunity. And I'll give you one example. Today, everybody uses 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is a very slow standard and uh, possibly not suitable for today's world. Uh, in US around the early 90s, they opened up this 5 gigahertz band. And that 5 gigahertz band was actually called the uh, uh, opening of the broadband in the US. It opened up a huge market opportunity for the Americas. In India, we were still looking at it, looking at it. And only around the last about 10 years, we opened up the 5 gigahertz, I think around 2010, 2015, period when we opened up parts, parts of 5 gigahertz band. By that time, the market opportunity had all gone. Now, 6 gigahertz was opened up in the US uh, last year. And within this period of uh, one year, most other countries, which are industrial countries, have already opened up that band and already are looking at that new market opportunity, uh, which we can use uh, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian engineers, Indian innovation capabilities. Provided the regulators, and we are very closely working with the regulators, uh, with the Department of Telecom, uh, with the TRAI, uh, with the Niti Aayog, uh, uh, and others, to see if how we can be a part of that uh, bigger global challenge. Now, 
the overall economic value that is delivered by the Wi-Fi uh, in, let's say, in 2025 is estimated, and this is a very detailed study which has been published uh, by the Wi-Fi organization. Talks about a five trillion economic value that will be delivered by Wi-Fi by 2025, and this has been documented. It's available in a study that was released in February 2021, providing the importance of Wi-Fi as a critical to economic resilience of the country. 2021, this value was 3.3 billion dollar trillion dollar, not billion trillion dollars. And in 2025, we are talking of a $4.9 trillion economic value delivered by the Wi-Fi. Uh, so you can look up the huge magnifying effect that this will have on the overall economic values. So maybe that puts some perspective on this whole discussion yes. we are having. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you very much. And I um, would like to put one question to Mr. Alok that, you know, what do you see as an options? for a Wi-Fi in terms of spectrum and technology variants going forward to meet up the demand? Yeah, ju just uh, I think Bharatji already talked about the market size and the opportunities that are there. Just to be clear, you know, what we do when we, we talked about the consumption of data and we have, you know, for, from our mobile data itself and uh, 4G is there, LTE, and we are talking 5G. So that's a broad, uh, plan, you know, throughout what we call as a, uh, you know, wide area network in that sense of the, but we also talk about short range communications and this is where local area network or metropolitan area network, this concept comes and we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, many of these technologies that are there. And also these are on unlicensed spectrum, the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz. So you don't have to pay for that because all others. So this is why, you know, even though we have this bigger scheme of things, but we switch over from mobile data to this Wi-Fi hotspot because we can do it much cheaper in that sense. This is IEEE which started the standards in technology and 802.11. And they used to call like B, A, G, N, those kinds of names, little confusing. So they have now translated into Wi-Fi 1, Wi-Fi 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is kind of deployed in many places. 6 is coming up, available. People are able to take it. Now, what do you change? Three bands, earlier it used to be just 2.4, then 5 came, and then 6 gigahertz. So some of these routers or hubs that you buy, you will see there are multi-bands, some are single bands. So look at the specification. In this time, even India, make in India a drive of Wi-Fi router, you know, it's significantly happening. I can see that. And there is this one specification on these, are you multi-band, are you not? Then the standard comes, you know, when you radiate something, it goes in all directions equally. But then can I have MIMO? So multi-user, multi, you know, multi-input, multi-output, and in a directions, in a multi-user scenario. That is one feature. Like that, you know, there are many challenges that people solve. For example, five gigahertz when you go, in 2.4 you have more interference because microwave is also there. But in five gigahertz, penetrations, you know, it's a bit more short range. So you need an extender. There is benefit because you get more data, but then you might need to have an extender. If you have a big house, two floors, you might need a range extender to do it. And how do you get this higher data rate? Because we told about 11 Mbps, now we are talking 1,300 Mbps. The new one is 10 gigabits per second and going into 30 gigabits per second in Wi-Fi 7. The modulation schemes and other things, those changes, those are the technology coded modulations because of which we get benefit of this. So that's a technology primer, why and what happens. Now, the other part is in the innovation side of it. In the smartphone, we want Wi-Fi, but sometimes we go to Bluetooth. So we have mobile data, we have Wi-Fi enablement, we have Bluetooth, we have NFC. So 
I used to work in ST micro, like let's say 2003, four time, this chips used to be 180 nanometer. And so you used to have a one Wi-Fi chip, one Bluetooth chip, one NFC chip separate. But now we have been able to converge and miniaturize and get it into the single chip. And because of which you can do this contactless payment through NFC, but you also have it, but inside maybe one chip. So these are the kind of technology uh, growth that is happening and helping us to choose between that mobile data to Wi-Fi to Bluetooth to uh, next level of things. I also wanted to give one example from Samsung that at home, because uh, smart things we have where we connect all the devices and have been responsible for the data platform, we have connected 200 million devices of digital home appliances globally. Now, when you do that, you have on one hand Wi-Fi router, but also you need a hub to connect these devices. So can you make a single device which can act as a Wi-Fi router, but would also be act as smart things hub in our case? But the idea is all these other sensors that are available, the gadgets, the devices that come, can we connect to that? So these are the kind of things, uh, innovation-led growth, and this market growth or the data consumption is one driver, but these innovations bring in multiple applications and opportunities uh, to be able to furnish. And with that, I think we have plans for India. We have been talking about railway stations becoming Wi-Fi. 6,000 stations have been connected. There are 250,000 hotspots that are available in India. Uh, so these are things that are happening. We are adopting it. But also, I think, uh, as designer, we are excited to contribute into the standards and other things. Did I answer? Yes, absolutely, sir. Thank you very much. You know, on a very lighter side, I tell you, pre-pandemic once, my wife asked me that, you know, do you make some kind of thing which can actually uh, replace our maids? Can this Wi-Fi of yours can actually wash clothes? I said, no, this is not possible. How are you saying that thing? And after two years, we are discussing on something that we have a washing machine that connects to an IoT platform, can do the things remotely. So you ask for it, it's possible, you know, and anything is possible because of the connected platform. It's, it's just, just a matter of writing the right applications on it. So before I do that, um, you know, I would like to ask uh, my fellow panelist, uh, Paritosh, on, on one thing. What is your take on the global trend of the evolution of technology and the bandwidth consumptions? I tell you why, because, you know, if I ask, when I asked that, you know, how many people have more than 100 Mbps of connections, they said there was none, only one who had 50 Mbps connection. That Ferro doesn't seem to be from India. So how do you think that, you know, how India is coping up with the, with, with the global trends? I think it's, it's a game of consumer and we as a technology vendor and those who create the chipset. Because see now, everybody's here having a mobile phone or a handset or having a broadband connection at home but actually you don't know what kind of speed you're having up and down at the point when we talk to somebody. Means that your services is driving the bandwidth requirements. Same thing with the Wi-Fi as discussed right now with Alok and et cetera. It's what is driving the trend forward? Is it, I need more speed, I need more speed, but for what? Question is, what do you need speed for? Is it the applications? Is it for the videos? Is it for next generation application? If we see global trend where things are heading, gaming is booming. Gaming require high bandwidth. High definition video require high bandwidth. Next thing that is coming up, it's metaverse. Metaverse is booming right now in US market, coming into US, Europe market, and it will come into Asia market in the coming years. What is metaverse? My metaverse is an online platform where you socialize, you create a world, you live in a world, and you have a gaming platform inside there. That is high consumption of data, which means that is pushing the technology trend forward. And we see the demand increasing on due to this kind of services. It's not because of we want to have the latest technology as consumer. It's service driven. Even today, if you talk about Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is nothing you can feel with your hands. You cannot see it in the hands. You can only sense it once the application is running. You see the application is running really smoothly means that, oh, my Wi-Fi is good. And the heavier applications, the heavier gaming uh, uh, platforms that are built up now means you need to 
re, uh, push the technology forward. So we also, as a technology company, we always see what is happening in coming three to four years, what is happening in market, where the technology trends are heading toward. There are Wi-Fi 4, 5, and 6, and then 7 coming up, and that will never be ending. Uh, but the thing is that, what do we need it for? So that's the big question, and we see the global market is heading toward more bandwidth requirement due to the applications side. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, um, I had my earnest attempt to ask Esmin Ekoshin to cover the spectrum, but uh, I still see a lot of curiosity without words. So I'm going to make it interactive now. So let's guys push off. Ask your heart out. Please ask Esmin Ekoshin to have the best wisdom out of it from this panel. We'll, me along with the panelists, will try to respond to the best possible answers we have with us. Feel free to shoot, sir. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Shirvastav. Uh, I am uh, from MTNL. I was the executive director of MTNL. Uh, I, my question uh, to all the panelists that the, uh, so many data consum consumption is being done. Uh, so, I'm not getting? A lot of data is being, I'm not irrespective of what the services are going on, but the data coming and the platform which, which is to be used has to be connected with someone. So when you are, or really make an analogy, Wi-Fi with a wife, so much for the dependence, but Wi-Fi dependent on what? Wi-Fi connection is dependent on the fiber. You know, the fiberization has become a problem because once you go for the connected with the or data center, what all this virtual reality or an actual reality, Whatever thing, the fiberization takes time, more than the cost and the time both. Yes. So how do you expect the, the proliferation of Wi-Fi without the proliferation of the fiber that move with the passive optical network pawn or the G-pawn or whatever the next pawn is coming on? So please respond to that. How much, how the Wi-Fi will be advancing once without the, the back end of the fiber? So let me start with this thing because, you know, I being a moderator, I supposed to be agnostic, but somehow, you know, can't control myself. So fiberization, proliferation is now has a better use case. Why? Because GPON as an FTTH is one of the technology which has been very vital for the forthcoming wireless technology. Just imagine that, you know, without having a fiber to the end, do we have any possibility of performing 5G? So I tell you, fiberization has no option but a mandatory requirement and has a more, you know, possible use case that we should have fiber all the places, which was not there earlier. You know, that's why we have an FTTH. So people spending on fibers used to have only a use case for FTTH. Now they have a multiple use cases. So that makes their business case more better and viable. So that's I see as a great motivation when we talk about the, uh, to have I'm a fiber issue. about the implication, the policy implication, implement, and then the compliance of the policy and also with the cost effectiveness. Because once you are going to put the fiber everywhere, the cost implication, do you can have a, uh, uh, have a case for that? Do you have a case for that? Because the fiber to the home is very much required for future to the home. It is really the future to the home. So what I just advocate that, the, without the fiberization with whole in wholeness, the proliferation of the fiber of the Wi-Fi, I, I don't think in, in any way it will come to the extent one, which we require. One yes. input on that side. Um, what is happening if you see in the statistic, India, they, you have two, two different things, fiber to the home and fiber past the building. So two different things. And what is happening now, India is getting fiberized because of the base station. So you have fiber all over place in every city, every village is going past by, but it's not connected to the last mile. But last mile you have seen the last two years during a pandemic, it's been the highest growth happening in India. Uh, and the reason is not that fiber just suddenly came to India. It's the reason has been by consumer in asking for it now, services. And that's made it possible to connect homes. Uh, and demand is driving it, and consumer is ready to pay for data now. So that's the change of peace, people's mentality also. So that has changed the demand and supply in the market. Yes. And of course, policies also has an impact. Government clearing out the policy, making it easier to get right of the way 
deploying fiber, which was a very lengthy process before. Now you can get it very fast. It's one window channel to get the fiber deployed. That's helping ISPs, companies who's doing the black fiber deployment to get ease of uh, installation. I don't know, it, it answers your questions. Otherwise, you know, we are available offline as well. Yes, sir, please add. Uh, I think I just want to add to, and I just want to give you an example. Today in my home, there are three fibers coming into the home and each is able to deliver almost 100 Mbps. And still I'm finding a challenge when uh, my grandkids come and my kids come, there are seven or eight computers working in the same home, uh, running off those three Wi-Fi connections running this. But if you look at around the world, fiberization is happening at a very fast speed. It is still the last mile connectivity which is a problem. Uh, from the fiber point to deliver to a particular village or a gram panchayat or a school or an enterprise. And I think that is where uh, E and V band will come a very big handy to deliver that last mile connectivity uh, at a very high speed. Uh, we are talking of uh, more than one Gbps. And that connectivity uh, from the fiber hub point uh, to the actual user uh, can be better done uh, of course, the fiber will be the ideal, but if we can't deliver on fiber, I think uh, E and V bands will really be a, a right choice uh, to connect that last mile. Thank you. No, you're right. This has no, this, it has no alternative. <laughs> yes, yes, please, please. Uh, please. Uh, let me ask a question here. See, uh, I do have a 100 Mbps uh, connection at my home. Uh, the real challenge I faced that actually the peak hours. Okay, in the peak hours I found that actually I'm not getting even uh, 10 Mbps. How India is really going to say uh, uh, give that actually be, of course, whatever you have expected in the bandwidth, you will get at any any point in time. That is very much important. And I would like to highlight here that, uh, of course, uh, at the last mile, of course, the sir has been highlighted about the point that last mile, will uh, the dedicated line will, of course, will get that, uh, uh, say, the bandwidth. But absolutely, how India is really capable enough to uh, give that much of bandwidth at any point of uh, point of point in time, and of course we are moving to the next uh, say uh, channel, next uh, next uh, line as well. How we are uh, say uh, in future, uh, we uh, we assume that India will be definitely uh, put in in a in dedicated uh, uh, say uh, uh, to provide the dedicated line, and how we are going to market this in future. I can fill in a little bit. Um, yes, that is that is the issue. That is a global issue. It's not only in India. Uh, whatever you buy, you don't get that service. The speed is not there. And especially in India, because it's, it's a technology change, people coming from the cable industry, jointing cable, now you need to splice the fiber cable, which is more a complex uh, procedure. And the, the learning, it's still a learning phase. Things are improving. If I just go back two years, it was even worse conditions. It means it's changing. And the bandwidth is not due to the t t technology equipment, it's due to the infrastructure that is not installed properly, it's not laid properly, and that is impacting the consumer in that. But that will be there until the ground level start learning, and that learning will only happen with expertise, uh, uh, experience, the fails. And that is happening right now. I see the bandwidth, how, how much better it's getting. Uh, as you just also mentioned now, people are talking about dual band only. Yes, you're talking about dual, but, but what speed you're getting? Yes, you're getting up to 100 Mbps. Two years back, you were not even getting 10 Mbps. So technology is actually helping it. Infrastructure is getting better, and that's the only way to improve it. And when it comes to data consumption, uh, they are building up caches all over. That's the only way to offload it. You cannot centralize the thing. It needs to be local cache. And in a country like India, which is massively, which means you need to have cash, cashy servers closer to the consumer, where the mass population is. And even that, I think in India is also building up one of the largest data centers to accommodate this uh, heavy load of data. So there are plans to really capture and handle this kind of data load because it is not going backwards. Hopefully, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is going to be the entire ecosystem overhaul. You cannot expect anything. To increase your only a backhaul or access technology is going to suffice everything. You need everything need to be done. You need to have a edge servers, you need to have a backhaul, you need to have an aggregation in place and everything. By the way, who is your operator? <laughs> who is your operator? 
actually I've done some Mumbai here and I absolutely uh, seen across the Mumbai the same case is happening because at, uh, I'm working from home plus I need to survive my kids as well to su sustain their viability. At the same moment I need to uh, say uh, upload a lot of data and uh, when I face issues here. Yeah. Okay. 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 Great, great. Yes, ma'am. What is the view of panelists here on the convergence between 5G and uh, Wi-Fi? So, with Wi-Fi, you know, being just an access technology and 5G providing the a seamless convergence of uh, 5G and Wi-Fi. I, I mean, it's been many of the technologies uh, are becoming common. If we look into inside, as I was telling about the modulation schemes, you know, you see the QAM structure as you move forward or the multi-user MIMO that is there in there. Obviously, uh, 5G has got lot many more choices because it's much broader in the wave DM to going into MIMO and much bigger arrays. Possibly here, uh, you know, the fundamental point here is the range. We are keeping it in a reasonable and the power consumptions is also kept it at the lower. So the constraints when you uh, go into the IEEE standards and you put it is a bit different. The technologies are still same, but the answers come a bit differently because, you know, we want a very high throughput in a restricted places and uh, that's what it is. So this is where the answers come a little differently. And I think there is a lot of uh, cognizance that both will be there and both will continue to grow for some more time. I don't think even in Wi-Fi 7, there is a competition in these. Uh, again, good technologies are getting adopted by both parties, which is fair and nice, why not? But you're solving a little different problem. And when I see like, you know, countries, just little extensions of that, but Ch China, when I look into their hotspot numbers, they have like 60,000 plus something, okay? Whereas in India, we already have covered 250,000 hotspots. Country size is similar. If you take smaller countries like Korea, Japan, they're like 20,000 hotspots. So it's not even there. So one may be not even relevant, uh, not about convergence, but if the data is throughout the places that I can get benefits, whether I am walking or uh, high speed, I'm traveling, every places if I can get, let's say 5G advantage or beyond 5G as it comes, then possibly the need for Wi-Fi is very less. It can still be some Wi-Fi tethering because there is some critical conditions you can't access certain thing or Wi-Fi direct to connect your TV at home. Few things will be there, but I don't see those many hotspots in countries like Korea, Japan. Uh, country size again is smaller, but nonetheless the usage proliferation. So my point here is, if you do not have uniform convergence like countries like ours, it is even to uh, cater to those pockets. Wi-Fi is a great solution. Underlying technologies can be same, can be a little different, but it is needed because I am not able to cover the whole country by the service provider. It is going to take 10, 20, 30 years. And I cover those hotspots and they get a great service in my coffee shop, in the airport, in trains and things like that. And we keep growing. At some point it may become irrelevant and I have a great service to this. So it's a, not a convergence, but an eliminations by uh, you know, limitations. So, so may just, I only two cents on this thing because... Yeah, just a short fill-in when it comes to 5G and FTTH. People are just saying this, how will they work together? It, it synergizes each other. It's actually supporting applications. 5G has been in Europe for the last two years. It's not used by mainly by consumers. It's machine to machine. It's auto, automatic driving. So it's used in a complete different domain but they're overlapping each other, that they are supporting each other on the backbone side. So it's completely different use cases. So, so the time is pressing. Okay, uh, we'll take the last question. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, cross-check a few things. Mr. Aloknath just said that there are 250,000 uh, Wi-Fi. Yes. yes. 250,000 uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. Uh, is it public Wi-Fi hotspots and what's the data source for this? Yeah, it's a free autopsy. I think Ashok ji is uh, not here. Otherwise, I'm sure you would have talked about PM Wani program. And uh, in his absence, let me mention that because it's a very vital program. The country started with 
uh, public uh, private players and partnerships uh, on some of the railway stations and we progressed quite a lot to cover uh, and typically these are becoming self-sustaining meaning first 30 minutes you get free but then they get charged and people don't mind because they need to work and they got their free share and then they keep paying for a certain period. Our data rate is quite reasonable because it is restricted, it's managed that way. And uh, even here, I mean, we, we could all work like, you know, specific places, airports and others in a very nice way. Uh, so those are standard like the Wi-Fi 3, 4, that places. So it depends on who is the service provider and the operator and who is bearing the expense. And I think, you know, as I was mentioning about the coffee shops and things, people are factoring in. Like when you go to a restaurant, we see the ambience and we pay for that, right? Same food. Food costs a certain amount, but I stay there for two hours, I enjoy the ambience, and I get the Wi-Fi free. That's kind of factored in as a basic service in many places, in hotels and restaurants and many other places. So I think these are public uh, free 30 minutes part of it, some maybe even longer, but depending on this. I got your point, but I'm asking, what is the data source for quoting 250,000 public Wi-Fi hotspots are available in India? Because PM Vani says only 56,000 have been deployed. So I'm asking from where have you got the rest of the two? 100,000 Wi-Fi hotspots. You can uh, get into this. I, I, I would not know the exact numbers that have been deployed and in the process, but you can see the Wi-Fi map of the world. You can check. And in fact, there are apps that shows even what is your closest Wi-Fi points that you can get access. It's like washroom being available or certain other things. So you can see that. Some might be in progression, some might be this. So I'm not the authority to claim the numbers, but that's what I see. Okay. Uh, my other question is to Mr. Bharat Bhatia. Sir, you uh, quoted a report about uh, public, uh, Wi-Fi market in India. I think 131 billion that you said is 2021 data. Which report is it and uh, uh, on what basis they have projected this? Because you'll see there were projection of 10 million Wi-Fi hotspots in India. But you know 56,000 have been deployed till date and still there's a long way to go. So what's the basis of that projection? Uh, have you, if you can uh, even cite the source also, I can pick up that report. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is a study that was conducted by the Wi-Fi organization. Uh, it's published uh, and uh, you can, uh, I can share you the URL. Uh, it, it goes into detail of uh, not just the public uh, PM Vani kind of uh, hotspots, but it goes into the private networks, it goes into the uh, public networks, and it goes in a very detailed way where this amounts have been calculated. Uh, so I think uh, best if you could go through that report, uh, those numbers are quoted directly from that uh, Wi-Fi org report. Sure, sir. Thank you. So I just wanted to say that the number that I mentioned is not just the PM Bani's program, but all the private, you know, private public kind of hotspots that are available. So this is the thing. And we can give you the source. I just checked that's the right number. Yeah, in fact, there are many places you have Wi-Fi hotspots which are not managed through the PM Vani or through the central schemes. Uh, these are available, uh, for example, in uh, villages or, for example, in uh, railway stations uh, or in bus stands or hotels or rest many restaurants actually offer uh, kind of a free Wi-Fi. So if you add up all that, all those, those numbers will be there. Thank you. So, so thank you very much. You know, I have received enough signals from the organization and then I have to wrap up the session now because, uh, you know, we are, we are running out of time. So thank you very much. And all, all questions were very, very um, relevant. All questions were good. And I hope we are able to address something and we'll be available after this call as well. If anybody has any, any questions where we can actually help step in. With this, I would like to thank the I would like to hand over it to you then. Thanks. Uh, before we end the session, we request our moderator to give mementos to esteemed speakers. Uh, Mr. Jivitesh Nayal, Paritosh Prajapati uh, from GX International Group.
डॉक्टर आलोकनाथ दे फ्रॉम सैमसंग भरत बी भाटिया फ्रॉम आई टी यू ए पी टी फाउंडेशन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ मॉडरेटर मिस्टर जीवितेश नायल Can we have a group photo, please? A group photo. 